Hey, God bless you. Listen, thank you for joining us today for the Truth Encounter broadcast. Listen, there's a powerful word from the Lord today. I believe it's going to tremendously bless your life. I can't wait to hear the testimonies of what God is doing for you. Listen, uh, listen, follow us on Facebook. Go and tell us there. Send us some message. Let us know how these messages and these teachings are empowering and impacting your life for the glory of God. All right. I look forward to hearing from you. Come on, let's go into the word today. Here we go. Go to my next verse. Verse 7. He says, but stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant or a slave in that he became like men and was born a human being. All right. Are y'all still with me? Watch this right here. The Bible said he stripped himself. Now, as I was praying and I was studying this, I was like, God, what in the world could he strip? Did he did he strip off his clothes? No, he did not strip out of his clothes. Here's what he did. Watch this, because all of this ha happens with your inner man. And we don't deal with the inner man enough. We tell you, oh, cover up and be holy. Put on the right kind of clothes and look holy. Fix your hair right. Make sure you appear holy. Let your appearance be holy before God. You can fix it all up on the outside, but it's the inner man that we got to deal with. When Jesus decided to strip himself, what he did was he said, I got to deal with this inner man in me. Okay. You got to deal with the inner man that's on the inside of you because it's that man that's leading your life down the wrong path. What do you mean, Pastor? Whenever you face a challenge and you hear that voice that says, you can't do this. How many of y'all been there? Wave at me if you've been there. All right, make sure I'm talking to the right people. That voice, hear me now, is often demonic. And it operates through your soul or through your flesh. How do you know, Pastor? Because my spirit has no part in that. My spirit, the Bible declares, is one with God. So my spirit is like, no, I'm supposed to be in charge. So what the enemy will do is he will come in and he will talk to your soul. Your soul contains your intellect, your will, your emotions, and your memories. And he will work overtime to manipulate your emotions or your soul. Mm -hmm. To try to get you discouraged, get depressed, and take on the wrong attitude of thinking. To embrace your feelings as your own. Remember, I always tell y'all, never, ever live life out of your feelings. Never. Your feelings are like the wind. They come and they go. You don't know where they start and you don't know where they stop. Your feelings are unreliable. You never rely on what you feel to make decisions in life. Never, never. But as you go with God, you got to deal with what's going on within you. You got to begin to question, where did that voice come from? Who told me I couldn't succeed? Who told me I couldn't accomplish anything that I put my mind to? The Bible declares, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Which means whenever you hear a voice telling you, you're not coming out of this. Your response ought to be, oh yes, I am. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When that, when that voice tells you, you can't make it, you got to respond, oh yes, I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, you got to know when God is speaking to you. That's why the Bible declares that the word, of the, the word of the Lord is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. When you know his word, his word will tell you when God's talking to you and when the enemy is trying to infiltrate and invade your life. And you tell him, no, that's not God. I don't, I don't receive that. I don't accept that. I don't want that. And you begin to walk in what God called you to. All right. So Jesus went internally and he stripped away his own thinking. He stripped away his right to make his own decisions. Are y'all hear me? He stripped away his ability to say it's my life and I can do what I want to do with it. He said, I'm giving all of that up. Not only that, then he says, I'm going to take the crown off my head. I'm not going to be a king before you, God. I'll take off my royal garments, and I'm not going to be royalty in your sight. The Bible says he took on the form or the attributes of a slave. He said, listen, I'll become a slave before God. Watch this. Please catch that. I'll be a servant. I'll be a slave. Do slaves have rights? 
Here's the challenge I'm put before you today. When will you become a slave for God? I told God, God, I'll be your slave. That means when God wakes you up at 3 o'clock in the morning to pray, do you get up and pray? Or do you roll over and say, God, I don't feel like it? Because slaves don't have rights. Slaves don't get to say no to their master. Mm, see this, pastor? Now, some, I don't want to be God's slave. That's because you miss the benefit of being his slave. When you are a slave of God, God leads you and guides you into all he has purpose and plan for your life. But when you are rogue and you do things your way and on your own terms, you will find destruction at every path. Hear me now. Whenever you make up in your mind that you're going to do things on your own, guess what? You got to sustain it on your own. God never intended for you to do anything on your own. But he intended to, on being with you every step of the way. If I have time later on, I'll preach on it. You go back to the book of Genesis. One of the things I want you to realize is that God never intended for man to have to discern between good and evil. God was going to tell man everything that was good and man would never know evil in his life. All the days of his existence. Hear me now. That's the way God designed this. God wants to lead your life into every good thing that he's purposed and planned for you. And he never wanted you. Y'all know that's a good father right there. Because any real parent doesn't want their child to face destruction and evil. If we could, we would remove all the bad from life and let our children only experience the best life has to offer. Jesus decided, I'm stripping away all of my rights. I'm letting all that go. Because hear me now, anything you hold on to. Anything you're not willing to give up for God will always win when it's opposed to God. You got to look what's on the inside. Are you the thing you're holding on to? I find that that's one of the biggest challenges people have. They find it so hard to give up their emotions, to give up their opinion, to give up their view on things, to give up how they want it to be. To give up their desires to God. And as a result, their unwillingness to release all of that prevents them from walking in full obedience to God. You can't walk in full obedience to him when your mind is already made up on how you want to do things. And how you're going to do things. You'll never be able to obey God until you fully surrender to him. So when you say, God, I want to obey you more. I want to obey God with more of my life. What you're saying is you're willing to give up more. You're willing to give up whatever you're holding on to. You're willing to surrender it to God. Jesus stripped himself of his privileges and rights in dignity. He stripped himself of his royalty and became a slave and said, God, I'm your servant. Whatever you want, that's what I'll do. That's what God requires of us. Whatever he wants, you got to make up your mind, God, that's what I'll do. Whatever you say, that's what it is. I'm moving my mind out of the way. I'm moving my thinking out of the way. I'm moving my opinion of you, God, out of the way. And I'm just going to love you. And whatever you desire of me, that's what I'll do. That's how I'll serve you. Watch this. And here we go. I'm about to wrap this up. Verse 8, and after he had appeared in human form, the, all these things, they're giving us what the mind of Christ looks like. After he appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself, watch this, still further. And carried his obedience to the extreme of death. He said, God, I'm willing to die if that's what you want. Real quick, let me walk right here for two minutes. I'm willing to die, God, if that's what you want. Did Jesus want to die in the garden? Absolutely not. How do you know, Pastor? Because when he got in the garden of Gethsemane and began to pray, he said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup, what cup? A cup of suffering that he knew he had to drink. He said, before I drink it, if there's any other way you can do this, let this cup pass me by. Here's what he said in our turn. God, I don't want to go through this. 
How many of y'all knew you had to deal with some stuff and you told God, God, I really don't want to go through this. God, I see it coming. I really don't want it. That's what Jesus did. Jesus told his disciples, y'all stay out here and pray. Well, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pray. I don't want y'all to hear what I'm about to say to God because I'm, I'm in a hard place. He was human like you and I. He was tempted in all points just like you and I. There was nothing special about him that gave him an advantage over you and I in the earth. Please get that because people are like that was Jesus. He, he, no, no, no. He was human. He was in all points tempted as we are. That's what the Bible declares. Yeah. Brothers ask me all the time. So, Pastor, you saying he dealt with lust? I'm sure he did. That was a woman that came and cried on his feet and then took her hair and started to wipe his feet. You don't think he saw that woman? I was like, she looked kind of good. But he was like, that ain't what I'm here for. See, brother, don't be tripping because you see a woman that look nice, but no, you need to go on, deal with that inner you and say, no, let me go do something else. As Paul told Timothy, flee youthful lust. Take off running and don't stop. So he was tempted as all of us are tempted in life. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? But what made, what made him different was his ability to make a decision to be committed to the plan of God when you are committed to God why did he do it because it goes back to his love he loved God more than anything else and what he said was if my disciples can't pray for me I'm gonna go in here and pray and God if you can make this cup pass please do so and I believe God said this is the only way and Jesus said if this is the only way he said father not my will but thy will be done. What did he do? He said, I'm laying what I want aside because what I want will mess your plan up. Every time you do what you want and you abandon God's will, get ready for trouble. You're going to head down the wrong path. But when God gives his will to your life and you say, God, I will trust you right where I am, no matter how hard it is, no matter how frustrating it is, no matter how uncomfortable it is. That's why he gave you the Holy Ghost. He's the comforter because if you're going to really obey God obeying God is uncomfortable obeying God does not always feel good obeying God is not convenient but thank God for the Holy Ghost who is your helper and will help you walk through the path here we go we gonna ride he said nevertheless not my will God I'll strip myself and I'll obey you if you will begin to strip yourself yes you got to go through some stuff yes you have to endure some things but listen there is something on the other side of your obedience there's something on the other side of your testing when God puts in front of you the opportunity to choose obedience to him what he's doing is he's giving you a test hear me now every time you have to choose God's way or your own way it's a test hear me now every time let me say it again you have to choose God's way or your own way it's a test all right what is it a test of it's a test of your love for him your obedience is a reflection of your love whenever God lets you choose the direction that you will take if you choose him it affirms your love for him again that's why every test goes to another level you don't take the same test in the second grade that you did in the first grade you keep going and going and going until you get to graduation do you hear me now some of you are taking first grade tests because God's Still waiting on you to pass the first grade you still in the first grade in your walk with God because every time God say okay here's the test will you choose me or will you choose your own way and you choose your own way he like okay he mark on your report card repeat but when you say God I'm going to pass whatever test of obedience you put in my life because I'm going to show you I've gotten to a place where I love you more than I love myself yes that's more appealing yes that road is easier yes that's what I want but God if you said this way this is the way I'll go and God said okay because you trust me more that's where he was getting you to I just want hey listen friends listen I'm not done yet but I just wanted to jump in real quickly and invite you to any one of our services at the truth church we meet on Sunday mornings at 10 30 a.m. where the power of God fills the house there and does an amazing work at the truth church listen we're located at 2019 Ball Road right here in the beautiful city of Memphis Tennessee and I would love to see you there I promise you your life will never be the same.
name. All right. Or you can join us on Wednesday night for our kingdom training and empowerment night. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. God is doing an amazing work as we teach on the kingdom principles of God that will really transform your life. All right. Look, I look forward to seeing you at the True Church real soon. Come on. Let's go back into today's message. I just want you to trust me more than you trust yourself. I want you to trust me more than you trust your education. Trust me more than you trust your intellect. Because what I can do in your life has nothing to do with your intellect, but it's by my spirit. Here's what happened. The Bible said, verse 9, and I'm rolling. Therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him. Let me show you something. Here's something when I was a young man. I told y'all I started preaching when I was 17 years old. And here's what, what the saints used to tell us. They used to say, if you want God to take you high, he said, what you got to do is you got to go down real low. I said, what are y'all talking about? You got to go low. They said, if you want God to elevate your life and elevate your ministry and elevate his purpose in you, he said, you got to stay on your knees in prayer. And when you humble yourself and stay on your knees in prayer before God, he will exalt your life. Because Jesus said, I'm humbling myself. I am submitting myself to you, God, and I'm going to stay before your face so that I always know your plan for my life. I always know your will for my life. I always know your purpose for my life. I always know what you desire for my life. I'm going to stay right here before you so that I can always walk out your purpose, your plan, and your design for my life. God said, Jesus did it. And because, now listen, you don't have to guess at why God did what I'm about to read. He's telling you why. And if you will follow the example, you will see the same thing. He says, therefore, because he stooped so low, what did he do? He was willing to be talked about. He was willing to be laughed at. He was willing to be spit on. He was willing to be rejected. He was willing to be crucified. He was willing to die all for the glory of God. And God said, because you were willing to obey me in all things, and you were willing to abase yourself, you were willing your heart to humble yourself beyond what any other man would do, he said, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to exalt you and freely bestow on you a name that is above every name. What are you talking about, Pastor? I was typing this morning, as I always do a reflection on this, that I'm going to put on the blog for y'all to read about obedience. And as I was typing this out here, I began to say, God, what are you saying to your people concerning this? He said, I want my people to understand that if they will trust me and obey me, he said, if they won't lean to their own understanding, but in all of their ways, learn to acknowledge me and let me direct the path. He said the path at times is going to seem like it's a hard path. The path at times is going to seem like it's a lonely path. The path at times is going to seem like it's a path that's uncomfortable and that you don't want to walk in. But God said if my people would trust me, and then he began to speak to me, he said, and there are some that have already been trusting me. He said, and this is the season of exhortation for them. I don't know where some of you have been in your life and what you've been going through in your life, but I want you to know if you've been going through hell and high water. Listen, I can't tell you who it is and who's been dealing with it but you know yourself the struggles and the trials and the tests and the hard decisions that have been placed before you in your life but I came to tell you today that God said if that's you then get ready for a season of exaltation get ready for God to raise you up I believe that in the next three months that God is about to cause major breakthroughs to take place in the lives of people that have gone through hard seasons in their life that have gone through times where they've been talked about they They've been laughed at and they feel like they were always getting the short end of the stick. They were the ones that had to always humble themselves down. They were the ones while others looked at them and stepped on them and mistreated them. God said, you're the one I'm about to reach way down because you were willing to stay before me. You didn't turn to the left or to the right. You didn't try to make things happen in your own strength, but you did it according to my purpose and my plan. 
make it plain, Pastor. I'm just looking for two people that get what I'm saying to you this morning. That you know people talked about you and you could have cussed them out, but you didn't. You know they lied on you and you knew all of their business, but you still wouldn't tell it all. You know they rejected you and tried to blame everything on you, but you took the blame and kept on rolling. You said, God, I'm going to take this liquor and I'm going to keep on ticking because I know your hand is on my life. Jesus said, I'll let them spit on me because I know what's about to happen. Mm. I wish somebody would get a revelation that while you're in the middle of what you're going through, just remember what's about to happen. That every test comes before the promotion. That's why God will test you because he's ready to promote you. God, some of you have been praying, God, why am I going through the test that I'm going through? Why do I have to deal with this? Because God is ready to promote your life. God is ready to take you to another level. And when you go to the next level, hear me now, old tests become easy. When you get to the 12th grade, grade your first grade test becomes easy you not even bothered by it you don't even study for it anymore because the information you need is already there can i tell you god is ready to promote you and when he promotes you after you pass the test you're gonna look back when that same thing try to come again and you're gonna be like oh that ain't about nothing i've been through that before i can handle that because before god promotes you he gotta make sure you can handle where he's taking you Here's what he said right here. He said, he has exalted him and freely bestowed on him a name that is above every name. I said, God, what does that mean to us? He said, please remember when Jesus humbled himself, he stripped himself of the power of his name. I hope y'all get this. And he said, so because he was willing to give up his rights to his name, he said, what I did is I exalted his name. And I didn't just exalt it a little bit. I made his name above every name. Do y'all hear me in here? Can I tell you that's what God is about to do in your life? If you've been looked over and folks thought you was nothing, but God about to make your name stand out. Uh huh. They thought you wasn't qualified, but your name is going to stand out. They thought you, did, you didn't match up. You didn't meet the quality vacation you wasn't what they was looking for but your name is gonna stand out because God is gonna put a grace on your name and where everybody nobody knew your name God is gonna make them recognize your name and like, I don't know what it is about this but this name just keep jumping out they applied for the job but their name keep jumping out we put it on the bottom of the stack how did it get back on top something about them I just can't forget you'll go on the interview and they'll be like somebody else but they'll be like I keep thinking about that person's name I keep thinking about we need to go with them. He said, I'm giving you a name that is above every name. Jesus' name has power. Everybody shout power. Jesus' name has power. He said, I'm going to give you a name that is more powerful than any other name. He said, Jesus, your name from now on is going to carry weight. As a matter of fact, his name, God, I'm about to get excited. His name is so powerful that you can't even get your prayers answered without asking in his name. Hear me now. Demons won't even leave without the power of his name. Do y'all hear me in here? You can't even get healed without the power of his name. You can't even be saved without the power of his name his name carries weight then look at this right here God he exalted him and put his name above every name watch this right here a name above every name God I love this look at verse 10 he says and at the name of Jesus every knee must bow in other words, I'm making you the head because you willingly became the tail. Mm. I'm going to put you out front because you were okay with being in the back. Can I tell you, when you humble yourself, you'll take a back seat no matter where you think you ought to be sitting. You'll sit back. When I was a young man growing up, they said, when you go into a church as a young man, I know you're a preacher, but that don't mean you sit on the platform. It don't mean you sit up front. Take the back seat. And if they know your name and they want you, they'll bring you to the front. Can I tell you something? Some of you have been waiting on people to bring you to the front, but it's not people that's going to bring you to the front but it's God that's going to bring you to the front it's God that's going to elevate you it's God that's going to raise you up if you take the back seat then God is going to give you the front seat you're going to sit in the back and God going to send somebody be like wait a minute come, 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 come here I want you to sit right up here a few years ago I was in a church a nice sized church 
and I didn't even think anybody saw me slip into the church. I slipped in, got on me a backslid in the crowded church, and I was just there to enjoy the service. And before I knew it, somebody walked back there, and they was like, hey, 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 you. I was like, huh, what? I'm just here to praise God and enjoy church. You know, you want to go somewhere where don't nobody know you so you can get your praise on. And I'm back there just trying to get my praise on. And I was like, hey, can you, you come here. And they said, come on up here. We got a seat up front for you. Now, the church was crowded. I didn't see any seats. They were like, come on. We made a seat for you. God, I hope y'all get this. I walked all the way to the front. And I had my friend with me. I walked all the way to the front, and they had a seat there for me and my friend. Can I tell you something? That's what God's about to do in your life. People don't know who they connected to, because when God raised you up, he go, whoever been loyal to you, whoever been rolling with you, through your prayer partner that went through it all with you, they don't realize when God bless you, they're going to get blessed too. Don't worry about the ones that left you. Don't worry about the ones that talked about you. Don't worry about the ones that put you down. Just keep keep the ones that's been faithful. Keep the ones that's been loyal to you. Because when God say, hey, come on, it's, it's your time. You're going to be like, but I got somebody with me. They've been faithful. Yeah, bring them on too. Hey, glory to God. As a matter of fact, you might be their friend. You've been the right friend to somebody. And you're going to get to go through the door because God bless them. Jesus' name carries weight. Watch this right here. In heaven and in earth. He said, and at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth. Here's what he said right here. He said, here's what I did for Jesus because he bowed and humbled himself to me in such a way to obey me in everything. He said, I made his name great in the earth. Mm. But I also made it great in the heavens. The heavens mean the spirit. God, I hope y'all get this. Don't you know that's what God is about to do in some of your lives? You're going to carry weight in the natural and in the spirit. Demons going to know your name. Don't you hear me now? Not just people, but demons are going to know your name. Angels are going to know your name. Pastor, Pastor. Friends, listen, we're out of time today, but listen, I know. You've been tremendously blessed by the word of the Lord on today. I believe something was said in this message that has really encouraged you and really impacted your life for the better. God has great things in store for you, great things that he wants to do and perform in your life. And I believe this is your day, this is your time, and this is the hour that God is really going to prove himself to you. Listen, before we go, I want to invite you to come fellowship with us right here at the Truth Church. We're located at 2019 Ball Road, right here in the beautiful city of Memphis, Tennessee. Listen, come from near, come from far, wherever you are, we would love to have you worship with us. I believe your life will never be the same. We pray that if you walk through the doors one time, that your life will experience a transformation and a shift that you'll never be the same ever again in your life. So look, I want to see you at the Truth Church uh, this Sunday. Meet us this Sunday, 1030 a.m., and watch what God will do in your life. All right? Listen, I thank God for you. We'll be praying for you. I can't wait to see you again on The Truth Encounter. Be blessed.